Now, I don't have the time to go into the historical uh, links between um, Congo, the Congo region and Flanders. Um, so I will limit uh, myself to the colonial uh, period, which is also uh, the connection that uh, Bakungu and Congolese are very conscious about. Um, and here to give you an indication, say, of uh, the difference in size uh, between uh, Belgium uh, and uh, the Congo, uh, which, as every Belgian known, is 80 uh, times as large as uh, uh, Belgium. And uh, one Flemish nationalist has calculated that, is one, that it is 172 times larger than Flanders. <laughs> um, during the colonial era, um, the Flemings, and I'm talking here about the period 1908-1960, uh, Flemings were more numerous than Francophones, and generally speaking, lower in rank. The majority of missionaries were Flemings, and many of them played the role of cultural brokers. Uh, but by and large, the image of Flemings is rather negative, as they represent the face of the colonizers. Um, and uh, to go back uh, to the previous presentation, um, in 1945, when a Francophone liberal uh, minister introduced a slave education for Congolese, which would be exclusively in French, uh, the Flemings uh, in the Congo oppose that, and they want to uh, get a, 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 a Dutch uh, recognized as an official language on a par. Uh, with French, and Congolese um, are very much opposed to that. And one Joseph Desiree uh, Mobutu at the time says that if the Flemings want to have their language recognized, well, fair enough, but then we want all our Congolese languages recognized uh, as well. But in fact, that is a non issue because the only language that we want to learn at school is the language of Molière. So this was a long time before uh, Joseph Desiree Mobutu became a Mobutu Sisiseko and uh, uh, started the ideology of um, authenticity. But um, this was uh, one of many things that did not endear a uh, 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 Congolese, uh, uh, including Bakongo, uh, to uh, the Flemings. Um, but uh, from the 1980s onwards, as the political and economic crisis deepens, uh, many Congolese actually develop a, a nostalgia for uh, what they call the temps des Flamands, the time of the Flemings. And uh, for Congolese in general, uh, colonization establishes a king relationship between uh, uh, Belgian uh, uncles, German uncles, Banco, and uh, the Congolese, and uh, especially that is the case uh, for uh, Bakongo. Um, now, in 1970, um, three years after Congo gains independence, uh, Belgium becomes a federal state, and there are some people that, uh, who say that it's actually a connection between the decolonization and uh, the federalization of Belgium. Uh, that having lost a common uh, aim, say now that they no longer had to come, uh, Francophones and Dutchophones drifted apart. Um, Belgium now has three communities and three regions, uh, and only in Flanders do the region and community uh, coincide. And I want you to look uh, specifically at the, uh, the picture on uh, the left which shows that uh, while Brussels is wholly located uh, in Flanders, uh, actually administratively it has a separate, uh, a separate uh, statue and therefore is not really part of it. Uh, now Belgians will have to vote in regional uh, federal and European elections uh, later this year in, uh, on 25th of May. Uh, and this is usually represented as a duel between uh, the Flemish Nationalist Party and the R that wants to split Belgium up and the Francophone Social Democratic Party that wants to retain the current federal state as it is. Uh, now, what has this got uh, to do um, with uh, uh, companies in Belgium um, or um, uh, uh, about well, uh, many Congolese uh, in Belgium uh, oppose President Joseph Kabila and they are convinced that he was put in power and is being kept there by the former 
uh, Belgian Francophone uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs, uh, Louis uh, Michel. And on uh, one day in April 2007, a group of Congolese marched uh, from Matongi, um, the, uh, Flemish, uh, the uh, African neighborhood uh, in Brussels, to the official home of the Flemish Prime Minister, Yves Le Ten, also in Brussels, holding Flemish flags. This is the Flemish line that you see here. Uh, participants asked Le Ten to throw balloons out of the DRC, like Flemings had previously thrown them out of the Catholic University of Leuven two years before Belgium became a federal state. The organizer of this protest march, Marius Nokonjele in the Congo, um, whom I interviewed afterwards, wants to create an economic union between Belgium and Congo, which he says would constitute, uh, which would constitute the most powerful economic power in the world. His movement is called L'Alliance des Reformateurs Congolais, Congolais with K, um, because he says he wants to invite non congolese to move to the country that is too sparsely populated. Everybody is welcome to build up the country again in collaboration with Congolese, Flemish in particular. Um, he says that Congolese can no longer accept that balloon politicians help sustain corruption uh, in the DRC and that Kabila owes his election victory to them. Flemish politicians, by contrast, he says, have integrity, are concerned about the DRC, and being very prosperous, they must help out the DRC. Congolese can learn much from Flemings. They are well organized. Barely a few generations ago, they were dirt poor, and now they live in one of the richest regions in Europe. They can help uh, DRC exploit uh, its mineral resources. If Flanders will succeed from the Belgian state, then he will take Flanders' side. After all, he says, uh, the port of Antwerp and the international airport of Brussels are situated in Flanders. Moreover, if Belgium ceases to exist, an economic union between Flanders and Congo is the preferred option, and Dutch, a language that he himself does not speak, will become one of the DRC's official languages. Um, now, he is not alone uh, in making uh, this kind of suggestions. Before the presidential elections in 2011, Mwanda Semi, as I said, the spiritual leader of Bundadia Congo and the self-proclaimed first president of the Republic of Central Congo, allies himself with Etienne Gisikedi, the major opposition lead, uh, leader, and in the run-up to the election in 2010, he writes a book called La, La Loi Sacrée du Royaume, The Secret Law of the Kingdom, in which he makes an appeal to the Flemish community, comparing the autonomous states of Flanders and Congo Central. Both are situated on the borders of the Atlantic Ocean. Their inhabitants have the reputation of being hardworking and good managers, and the cities of Brussels and Kinshasa face similar problems. Wholly situated in Flanders and Congo Central respectively, they are politically separated from them, overrun by so-called farmers who speak a different language and challenged by a disturbing multiculturalism. <laughs> a training between these two states, including double nationality, will be to the advantage of both. He urges by Congo and Flemings to stop looking to their future relationships through a rearview mirror because the Belgian colonization of the Congo has allowed us to create many links between them. As I said, uh, Congolese uh, in general, and Bakongi in particular, consider Belgians uh, and Flemings in particular to be their maternal uncles, and hence a privileged partner on the international scene. Or as Luc Putman, uh, a former Belgian ambassador in Kinshasa puts it, the DRC is the only country in the world where Belgium is a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> now, the results of the DRC collections, I'm coming to the conclusion here, I can assure you, uh, were uh, uh, in 2011 were hotly contested. Protest meetings were held in various Belgian towns, leading to violent confrontations with the police in Matongi in particular. Ever since these elections, many Congolese in Belgium are convinced more than ever that Belgium's policies vis-à-vis -vis the Congolese authorities will change dramatically and for the better if the Flemish Nationalist Party and VR wins the elections 
on uh, 25th May of this year. So, by way of uh, conclusion, um, and these uh, are just a few examples um, of uh, political propaganda for Congolese uh, to uh, suggest that they uh, vote uh, for uh, the NVA. By way of conclusion, many Bakongo Congolese in Belgium are more concerned with their home country than with Belgian society. But the meaning of the concept home country is not always clear. While many Bakongo long for a return to the historical Congo kingdom, they are often actively involved in supporting the continued existence of the DRC. Even though those who on a spiritual level identify first and foremost as Congo, on a political level identify in the first instance as Congolese. There appears to be a difference between their long-term spiritual aims and their short-term political, uh, political, uh, political aims. It seems that more often than not, they are more preoccupied with the current geopolitical situation of the Congo than with the long-term project of unification of the so-called three Congos. But Congo's identification with Flemings derives from the recent colonial past. It is a reading and reinterpretation of that past and inspired by the, the enemies of my enemies are my friends approach, combined with an acute awareness of Flanders' prosperity. Bakongo in Belgium and the DRC want to transform their relationship with their Flemish uncles into a partnership on equal footing. They may believe in the spiritual superiority of the two Congos and use it uh, to move the now marginalized Congo region to the center, but it seems as, as far as the current political situation is concerned, they think that only an alliance with Flanders will allow the DRC to move to the geopolitical uh, geopolit uh, center, even though from an international perspective, it could be argued that Flanders itself is a very marginal uh, region. Try to name uh, 10 fl uh, famous Flemings apart from Nam Van Sina. However, in many ways, Congo, Congolese relations with Angolans and Flemings are very similar. They claim an identification with Angolans from Congo descent, but in practice rarely, uh, rarely associate with them, know little about them, and do not even get on with them. And in a very similar way, most Congolese in Belgium do not master Dutch and do not engage with Flemish culture or politics. If they did, they would realize that Bart de Wever, the president of the NVA, is an unlikely saver, a savior. Like the other Flemish parties, NVA has no specific police, uh, policies as far as the DRC is concerned and does not consider it a priority. Uh, in addition, the party takes a harsh position concerning in, uh, immigration. I have recently started doing field work uh, in one Flemish village and one Flemish town with a significant Congolese minority that are now governed by an NV uh, majority and their policies do not vote well for Congolese in Belgium. And perhaps uh, they will find out to their cost on 26th of May after the day after the election that their strategic vote for the NVR will backfire spectacularly. And I leave it at that time.